A quick one for those of you in the UK who are interested in track days. There is one very special track day coming up, which I'm going to be attending, and I quickly want to tell you a little bit more about. On the 7th and 8th of June, Pirelli are going to be hosting their P0 experience at Silverstone. This is going to be an incredible day. It's taking place on the full Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. That's the same layout the Formula One cars use, and the same layout you may have seen. I took a Ferrari 430 Challenge car around not so long ago. It's essentially an open pit lane format, so you can turn up in your supercar and do as many laps as you like. But of course, being Pirelli, there's going to be amazing Italian hospitality. There's a full lunch in the BRDC clubhouse, and some other amazing manufacturers are going to turn up and offer test drives in some of their other performance or super cars. So yes, I'm going to be there. There are a few other slots remaining. So if you're interested, head to p0experience.pirelli.com. That's p0experience.pirelli.com. Find out more information and book your slot because I just think it's going to be an amazing day and I hope to see some of you there. I'll also put a link in the description of this episode so you can find out a little bit more about the event, find out the timings, exactly what's going to be going on. Of course, it goes without saying it's going to be a COVID safe event, various protocols in place to ensure that. But all in all, it'll just be an amazing, fun day. So yes, check it out, p0experience.pirelli.com, and I hope to see some of you there. Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass. I'm your host, Sam, from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. And I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. Yes, you are. Uh, Each week we get together, we talk about cars, motorsport, F1... Car, what else? Cars? 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 We cars, cars, cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on youtube.com forward slash behind the glass. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And Tony, if people want to support this podcast, what should they do? Watch it. No. <laughs> But also head to Patreon. You can support us on patreon.com forward slash behind the glass. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode. A little tiny bit of housekeeping that I need to do before we get crackalacking. Uh, patrons, because we've, we've had a whole lot of new patrons sign up. I think maybe off the... Yeah, we've, our last few episodes have done quite well. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, well done. I mean, the... the the, the, the Shmi one done very well in terms of views. Over 100,000 views on YouTube for that Shmi 150 episode. Oh, amazing. Mm. But then we've the last few, they've all done they've done well. So we've yeah, had an, have, yeah. an influx of patrons and we love our patrons. They're the best. Um, so I'm just going to shout out a few of our latest uh, members. Kieran, Kieran Edwards, you're a hero. Chris Jackson, Robin Lawler, uh, Laurie Mackerel, Rob Henry, uh, Daniel Johnston, Harrison Maxwell. You're all heroes. Welcome. How many patrons have you met? How many have I met? Uh, Actually met. Well, hardly any because we've been in lockdown the last three or four months. All right. Well, that's I've got one up on you because I've met a few. Have you? Yeah, yeah. I bought cars off a of mate. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, you always say that you, you're buying cars off patrons. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So Great. I've got one up on you. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> I might speak to them more than you do. No, that, I think. Y- I think yeah, I maybe. bet you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they probably <laughs> prefer to talk to you. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me. They're always like, how do I get a direct line to Tony? <laughs> to slag him off and tell him he's an idiot. What's going on, me? Yeah. So, yeah, patience. Thank you very much uh, for signing up. Uh, we need shipping information so you can get your goodies, your mugs, your keyrings, your stickers, your t shirts, etc. Missing a lot of. Uh, a lot of information for them. Where for, are we, for where patrons, are we so. sending all this to, by the way? All over the world. Very I'm good. not even joking. Abu Dhabi, Australia, Switzerland, America, Israel. I mean, it's not just everywhere. India. I'm wondering if we've done it to India. Yeah, well, well, I mean, we're big in Pakistan or something. We? we are big, yeah, in Pakistan. I think. Yeah. We're, yeah. Oh, by the way. Sorry, one second. Did you know we went number one in the UK a a week ago or 10 days ago? Oh, it's about time. I mean, honestly. We always float in the top three. Uh, Yeah, But we went number one and we didn't even notice. We could have gone all crazy on Instagram and be like, number one podcast. (laughs) And then we would have that really awkward moment when we dropped back to number two and be like, yeah. (laughs) But that was an exciting moment. Yeah. A lot of people were quite upset that I didn't do my F1 podcast this week, the the after the chequered flag with Paul Wallace. Oh, I thought you were going to say a lot of people were upset with something I said last week. Oh, well, that, that's usually what happens. That's coming. Yeah, that's no, <laughs> usually what happens. But no, essentially, you might not even have noticed, but there was a Grand Prix at the weekend. Happened in Portugal. I noticed half of it. The rest of it, I fell asleep. I, it was... Su- it, unfortunately, it happens. Like in football, like in snooker, as you were speaking about snooker before we started recording. Mate, I really like the snooker. Good on you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you get boring matches, you get boring games. Yeah. This was a very boring race. And it got to Sunday evening. Obviously, it was a bank holiday weekend here in the UK. And I texted Paul, I said, what are we going to talk about on the podcast? It's going to be over in five minutes. We'll run through the finishing order and be like, 
Okay, so we've we've agreed to do a double episode or a double hit Grand Prix episode next week after the Spanish Grand Prix because it's back to back Grand Prix. Fair. So next week there'll be a, a, a an after the checkered flag episode which will focus on the Portuguese Grand Prix and the Spanish Grand Prix. I'm not really sure we're going to have anything more to talk about regarding the Portuguese Grand Prix by then, but who knows? So anyway, that's that's what's happening. For those of you that have been upset, I apologise, but I'd rather do good episodes than really bad ones. Yeah, yeah, good or not at all. Quality over quantity. Correct. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, talking of bank holiday weekends, I had a very good one. Tell me. I took a Defender 90 to Cornwall. Did you? Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. What, there couldn't have been many of you because you can't get many people in it. Me, Vicky and Twiggy. Oh, fine. So it's plenty of room just. <laughs> Twiggy had the whole backseat to herself. So... I have been waiting to experience the Defender 90 for a long time. We've spoken about it quite a bit on this podcast. We did. That I thought that would be the car for me. Potential X3 replacement of the new Defender. The 90 was the one that I thought looked the coolest, sounded the coolest. Why does it sound the coolest? Well, Same as a concept. The, no, on the not, not audibly. As a con- the idea of the 90 <laughs> sounded cool on paper. Okay. Looked cool on paper. I don't know. So, yeah, I was super hyped. And you, obviously, are not the only person who's been kind of saying, well, I'm not really sure that the 90 doesn't. It's not quite right. And you can't get in and out of it. Well, anyway, off I went on my adventures. Amazing spec from Land Rover's press office. That blue tangent. Yeah, 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 blue. yeah. Very nice blue. Um, and when it literally first turned up, I was like, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Like, I text you straight away. So you did, yeah. just got in it. This thing is so cool. Um, about... 35 minutes into that experience, <laughs> I went, oh, it's, oh, it's quite hard to sort of... It's a little bit annoying. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, right, now, I don't really know how to go about this. I still actually kind of want one. <laughs> like, I kind of admire how, not bad it is, it's still a brilliant car. As a thing, it's brilliant. Like, it's still as capable as the 110. Like, it's a great thing but it really makes close to no sense yeah. unless you think of it as a two-seater SUV. Which is a bit contradicting anyway. A- agreed. Because uh, in, not... in SUV is utility. And sports, I mean... actually. So four by four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a two-seater off-roader. Okay, good. Um, because, let me, I'm going to try and go through this, and you, I, I want to hear all your opinions, because you've, mm-hmm. you've driven quite a few of these Defenders now. I've got one, I've turned one up you've one today. turned up in a 110 today, you just mm. took it in for stock, right? Yeah, yeah. With the steel wheels. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, so, okay, let's get into it. The 90 that has rear seats, lovely, plush, leather rear seats, they're really nice, and actually, when you get into them, it's a really nice place to be in the back there. But How actually, tall are you? How tall I'm are six you? foot two. Okay, good luck getting in. Yeah, no, getting into the back, uh, a massive headache. Yeah. You can obviously move the seats for the front seats forward. Mm-hmm. It's still a tight gap. As a person I spoke to who who tried a 90 for a while, he had young kids that he needed baby seats for. Oh my He's like, God. that's not a thing. Like trying to get anything bulky into the back via the front doors, near on impossible. And I experienced that with shopping and even Twiggy's bag. Twiggy has a her own bag. Um, I've seen this. You've seen, you've it's seen not it. mine. <laughs> uh, so getting stuff in and out, b- bad. I say once they're they're up and if you're in them, very nice, but fine. Getting actually in and out of the car is still difficult in the 90s. I'm just going to come out and say it. They've gone so far in the sort of the height of the thing and the kind of rugged feel of it. It is an effort getting in and out. Now, I think that the car is tailored. It's it's gone too far in telling itself towards a butch demographic. Mm -hmm. It's... The doors are heavy, dude. Well, they will be. Most, if you look, think of a Bentley door, it's a free door, big Bentley door, or a big, just a big free door car, the doors are, because they're bigger than a four door. The minute you're on a slope or a hill or anything like that, it is so difficult to open and close the doors. Yeah. And Vicky despised it because of that. Yeah, yeah. Because everywhere we went, she was like yanking doors or they were flying back on her. She got her leg trapped at one point. It's That's quite too- funny. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think so. No, um, and, you know, it, it's too much. It's too far. I get what they're trying to do. And, I, I, you know, people say, oh, just build some muscle. It's not the point. It's too much. Yeah. So then let's focus on the, the rear door, right? Because yeah. the old 90... Did it open the rear door? 
a couple of times. <laughs> uh, the rear door, that's where you would climb in as a passenger, right? Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, you'd get in and out as a, for the rear seats through the back door. Did but that have a step? No, that hatch is now smaller and even higher. So and you, no step. And no step. Ah. But let's talk about luggage space because whilst the seats are up, you have minimal luggage space and the seats recline ever so slightly. So it's a descending triangle, if that makes any sense. So you can't stack stuff either. Because if you stack stuff, it's all getting pushed. It topples over. So every time you open the door, I think falls out. It's not flat, you mean? It's not flat. Oh. It's not upright because the, the rear seats recline ever so oh, on an angle. That. So you can't stack bags on top of bags on top of bags because, as I say, they just start to topple over. Not like a van. It's not, not it's, like a van. It's not, oh, right. Oh, right. So then if you think, okay, fine, we'll just fold the rear seats down. Apparently, you can remove or loosen the proper bottom of the rear seats, but that's a hassle. So if you just, just want to fold them down... They then sit on about a 45, maybe a 30 degree angle. So you don't have a flat bed. Right. So then you're laying stuff on top of it in a declining space and it all shuffles around and moves around. So the rear space is pointless. Yeah, which is uncharacteristic of Land Rover, to be honest. And of a Defender. Because they normally get that bit bang on. If you look at even the Discoveries and the Discovery Sports and stuff, the, the seats fold flat, mate. You know, they're, they're really good at that. Exactly that. So if other models within the Land Rover family can do it, surely the Defender should do it. So here I was with this car that every time I got out of or walked up to or drove, I was like, yeah, yeah. But then constantly frustrated me for the five or six days that I had it to a point where I was, even I was starting to be like, oh, come on, like just annoyed. And I was continuously trying to sort of make excuses because I like, oh no, but I just, I love it and I want it and blah, blah, blah. But it did continue to frustrate me. And so on the final few days, I went, okay, I think I've, I think I figured it out. If you're going to get the 90, just do not have back seats. So buy the commercial. Buy the commercial with the three seats in the front. Yeah. And then all your problems theoretically go away. Yeah. That's that's, that that's, that's, uh, that's my summary because there's no really way around it. No, there isn't. I uh, agree. Uh, and so the the ninety station wagon, if that's what you call mm -hmm. it, or the ninety four seater, it's unfortunately it's just not as cool as it looks. As much as I do still kind of want one in some weird way, if you bought one, I think you would just be so frustrated unless you were a single man or a woman who was willing to open and close those doors. And I mean, you'd have to have muscle. But if you lived a sort of solo life. Well, you never really had much stuff to put in it and you never planned to put anyone in the back. Fine. Okay, so what, what I think it is, is a big chimney. That's what I think. I think it's a big Suzuki chimney. It's perfect if if you are just a couple or like you said, a single person. If, if you need it for any convenience, forget about it. Just buy the 110. But, but, you know, and people, I've had a lot of comments on the video that went live talking about this, saying like, oh, well, you know, just get over yourself and fold the seats down, put myself, like, oh, you don't, don't get the 90 if you want to have lots of things. Get the 110. We did a trip to Cornwall. It was two of us. Yeah, and a dog. And a dog. And, and a little dog. We could hardly fit the bags in. Yeah. I mean, you can fit them in an R8. Mate, I agree. <laughs> I, I completely so, agree with you. But I'm saying this from a point of frustration mm. because as I say, I still love the idea, the look. It's the one that I think I would want. But actually now having spent time with it, my realisation is that for me and my lifestyle, if I was to ever get a Defender, I would have to get a 110. A broken clock still tells the time to us today. It doesn't mean it's any good. <laughs> the most philosophical thing you've ever said, and it's taken me a couple of minutes to, to sure register. Well, register that you've said something philosophical, but actually something so wise. Well, mate, honestly, are you joking? I mean, I'm not privately educated, but I've got a brain between these ears. Not well, much sometimes of Sometimes I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a very elongated rant about... The Defender 90. But I think it's because I, it comes from a point of frustration, really. I, I guess. And I'm right again. You're right again. That's probably where the frustration lies. <laughs> it's always fuming. <laughs> I'm always fuming when you're right. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. And I'm just going to keep... By the way, feel free to interject if you have things that you want to talk about. But I've got such a long list. I'm just no, going to keep... No, you carry on, mate. It's going to yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Because we teased it last week. My video driving the Ferrari 16M and Speciale Aperto. Oh, I saw that. I even... Went in on you. Did you watch bit. it? Uh, no, not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw the Instagram. You saw the Instagram. Well done, yeah. mate. Cool. Thanks. Good, good support. No, I, I'm joking. I'm joking. I know you don't watch content. Um, I don't so watch yes, anything. 
I we we spoke about this bit because it was you know uh, when we recorded last week I sort of wanted to tease it slightly but I didn't want to reveal what was happening because that's a pretty special moment driving mm. those two cars yeah, back to back. Yeah. Now, have you you've driven Specialia Perta? Specialia Perta. Uh, sixteen M. Did I drive Jimmy's one? Stop at some point. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm. Uh, I've driven all of them, I think. I'm almost sure. The only one I think I don't think I have driven is the... Wait a minute. Do you want a piece, the... piece of spider? No, not piece of spider. Okay. I think that might be the only one I haven't driven. Fine. So... I've driven a piece, though. From... <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> from the outside, which one would you think you would... Well, I know what you're going to say. Which one would you think you would prefer? Out of the 16M and the... And the... Aperta. Out of the 16M. No, you... Shut up. I would, mate. I, I like the 16M. I nearly just fell off my chair. Why? Because I, you know, I'm, I quite like the Scud. You know, I talk about the Scud. I know about. you do. So it's just a nice version of that with the roof down. I mean, it sounds better than a 458, the yep, 16M. Yeah, true. Uh, it's more special. Uh, agreed. There's only 400 or 500. Four, 499. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And as well, we I like a modern car more than anyone. But j- just every now and then, I do fancy an old car. Well, as we know, with the Goldwing. Uh, yeah, or the Pagoda. There's one the outside Pagola. now. Pagoda. Pagoda. What did you call it last time? Pagola. But I get confused. You no, know, no, it's easy to get confused. With, ev- with every bit of wisdom that I say, sometimes <laughs> I put my words up. You do. Um, okay, I'm like, I'm so happy right now because <laughs> I'm so with you. The 16M is the one to have. And I'll tell you why, as well, my opinion is. Please. Is because I, when you've got the roof down in the Ferrari, it's not really about speed at that point. So the the Aperta, the 458 Aperta, is obviously a much better car and loads faster. But are you having more enjoyment in it? Probably not. You're probably having a lot more fun in the 16M. Well, this is just it, and oh God, we sound like a broken record, but it's another case of cars getting better, but potentially worse. And before I'd stepped in either, I would have said to you and anyone that in my mind, the Special Aperta was probably going to be one of my favourite Ferraris of all time. Because mm-hmm. I, I always, especially for me, was like pinnacle, like supercar, like, you know, I was getting to an age where I was like, that's the one to dream of and blah, blah, blah. The thought of having a roofless Speciale, I was like, "That's surely that's just going to be the best car ever." I drove the 16M first, which was probably the right way to do it, but also the you know the wrong way in terms of the Speciale's case, because the minute I got in the Speciale, it didn't have any of the character, the feeling, the specialness of the 16M. It was just way too refined, way too composed, and it only started to kind of impress me at speeds. Mm. Once I started, because it's so, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. so, somebody commented being like, special is not that fast. It's not a supercar. But, but it, it, I mean, it is it, a supercar. It, it's a, I mean, it's so fast. And it, and it is fast. But in terms, I've said this before, that, you know, I had a speciality for nearly two years. And <laughs> I know it is a daft thing to say, but compared to modern supercars now, it's not that fast. Maybe that's what that guy was, was kind of... Yeah, it's relative. It's relative, Of yeah. course, you put 720S next to a Speciale, the Speciale is going backwards. Correct. But if you get into a Speciale and drive it, it is very, very, very fast. Very fast, of course. 600 and horsepower. That's when it's impressive. That, that yeah, blew yeah. me away. But the gearbox was too smooth. Yeah. Unnoticeably smooth. Engine doesn't sound that great. Engine does not sound that great. No. The steering is sort of too pointy, it's razor sharp. Far too fast. Too yeah. fast the steering, um, and just all it just it just it just didn't really do anything for me until, as I say, I started to push on the 16M. The minute I started it, I was like, "Ooh, yeah." Ooh. yeah. And maybe that's because that's my era. That's my Ferrari era. But there's just something about that formula. It looks, it feels different. The Speciale with the roof up, it's hard to tell that it's an Aperta or a Coupe. Mm-hmm. The 16M just is his own thing. Mm. And it flexes like mad. It's not the best. They ran a track, you'd probably be 85 seconds slower. It's than not the, what it's about. Doesn't matter. Uh-uh. I never thought you'd say that. So this is a really odd philosophy for me. If I, if I had to pick between the 16M and the Speciale Aperta, mm-hmm. I'd have a 16M. I know what you're about to say, but go if on. If I had to pick a pista especially, I'd have a pista. Spider. 
So basically, we don't like the speciale anymore. No, 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 no. That's not no. But what I'm saying is, is if you come to modern times, the piece the spider is so much better. Okay, it doesn't sound quite as good, but it still sounds. Re- We've had this conversation. Oh yeah, piece before. sounds good. I'm I, I'm so over the whole. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, me good. too. I'm I'm over it as well. But it's just because the speciale. I don't think, and I lived with one for a while. It doesn't sound as good as what people. Think it, the special is from noise. Factory, it's it's not that nice a yeah. noise. I I have to agree with you there. And I was that became very evident to me during Drive the World when I did when I had that week with the Pista in Dubai and I jumped in a speciale for the day and I was like, oh, like get me back in the Pista. Like yeah, um, even though the Pista's a death death trap. Um, I only so, on cold tires. Speciale was one of those cars that moved the supercar game and Ferrari's game forward so far, but weirdly. I'm kind of with you that, especially at the money that they are, I'm not really sure I would go for one anymore. But then they've done it again. You know, they've moved it on again when they bring the Pista out. Because it's again another level again on top. Yeah, but I, but I, I would then say the Pista for me is a is a tad too far. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, think, I think it just is a death trap. But, isn't, but aren't all modern supercars just too far? They're too fast. Sure. Yeah. I do love a pista, but but I, uh, I just a I just I just feel like myself, and I think you as well. But just stepping away from a speciale a bit, I just mm. it's lost some of its appeal. Maybe, maybe it lost the appeal for me slightly because I owned one. Yeah, fair, fair, and, fair, and fair, I've fair. done it and been there, done that. Maybe onto the yeah. next thing. But I honestly, I do look at sixteen M scuds. I look at them a lot because sixteen M. I just think, yeah, oh, that's mate, a car for a collection. They're, they're, not, I mean, they are a few quid, but they're like 300. There's a, you wouldn't take it, but there's a left-hand drive on at Girardo & Co for 270 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, seen, I've seen convertibles at like 240. Really? Left-hand drive cars, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's for me is one of the all-timers for the, for the future 68 car, Ferrari car collection. <laughs> um, that's that's going to be in there. Well, look, speaking of special roofless Ferraris, Literally a couple of hours ago, and you might not have seen it because you're probably driving. I was. Ferrari revealed the 812 Competizione Aperta. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. They just reeled the coup. You know, mate, they real... never used to do that. I know. It's ridiculous, right? But let me let me show you. Because the thing is, you've got to remember that the, the 812 GTS was released with as little fanfare. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check this out, though, because remember we looked at the Competizione last week and we were like, a bit too much going on. Oh no, that's lovely. It's so nice, right? Yeah, that's, and that's the exact what it's going to be. How, how, yeah, that's launched yeah, by from front. Yeah, how did yeah, they get yeah. that so right? Yet the coupe theoretically so wrong. But maybe, maybe, yeah, beautiful. You know so what that nice. might be. You know what that might be. That might have been the paint and the. Well, the, as the, we spoke about before, it's the launch specs from Friday. It's a yeah. disaster. Yeah. But I, honestly, having slated the competition last week, I'm now like, I need a competition aperta. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it just looks like the best thing in the world. And that will be unbelievable with that engine. Yeah, it will be, yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. 819 horsepower. Less torque, funnily enough, than the 812 Superfast. Really? Yeah, less torque, more horsepower. It's similar speed, though, right? Yeah, yeah, of no, course. Lightweight right, components, yeah. lots of aero. But, I mean... I've spent a lot of time saying how I'm how upset I am that Ferrari did the eight twelve GTS and especially how they released it and the fact that you could kind of pretty much anyone theoretically yeah. could walk in and order one. But that car right there, Competition Aperta, that is like they're they're staying true to the ultimate top of the range, roofless Vita. I mean, oh, it's just yeah, so they've special. done that GTS to to obviously accommodate you know a, a bigger customer base because the people that can't get that car and we know that there won't be many people that'll be able to get it okay it's not the same the gts but it is a v12 convertible so you know i kind of get why they've done it anyway i'm super excited to to see those cars in in the flesh i, I had been speaking to a great patron of ours and a, and a friend of the channel uh clint out in dubai mm-hmm. um who, who's got a few cars and, and he was saying that you know proportions of the car like in the flesh it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be we're, yeah, we're yeah. all gonna love it and it's got the, the coupe, the competition, a lot more presence and, and stuff over the Aperta, um, which I think will make sense. He made a good point that the Aperta from the back looks a bit like an SF90 Spider, which I get. It's a bit of copied parts there, copied lights and things. Mm. Anyway, we'll wait and see, but very exciting day. And 
that Aperta is probably the first really new fry that I've been, as, I mean, the Roma I love. I keep saying I'm not that excited by new fries, but I, there's lots that I am excited Well, as you, as you touch on SF90, actually, mm-hmm. um, I've been looking at specs and that on them. I mean, I'm not going to order a new one. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> oh, speaking of left fries, I was <laughs> going to buy one at the weekend. <laughs> but um, they're... There's about a year wait for them. Sure. Spiders, tiny bit longer, but not a lot longer. Right. Um, You can have the Fiorano kit, which Aceto is like... Aceto Fiorano. 40 grand or something, but you can't have list. But from what I gather, quite a lot of people are specking the Fiorano kit. Now, they start at 390 something, 394. A good coupe is like, with the kit, it's probably like 450, 480-ish friend of mine's got his specced up to 508 i mean I, I mean he must have ticked every box good lad spiders are like late fours but they the residuals on them from ferrari are like 75 percent rv so Amazing. mate they're not even that much money i thought i mean i'm not gonna order a new one but but, but to give us some numbers where like, where's tim at magnitude Tim, give us some numbers. No, I didn't get what? actual numbers, but, okay. but I, I just, I said, what's the RV on them? And they said, the RVs are really strong. They're about 75%, which is unbelievable for a new car. I don't want to put Tim on the spot, but I feel like I really want to call Magnitude right now. So can you give us some finance <laughs> questions on SF90? And then call us back. Call us back. <laughs> Behind the glass. Oh, let me see. I, I might just, like, literally. Just email him. It's going to be really, uh, Really horrible to put them on the spot. So, like so, I, so I can have a guess. Quick. I bet I won't be far off. So, ten percent deposit. Say, quick, DTG. forty or fifty grand in, probably be about f- uh, uh, four grand a month, three and a half grand a month, something like that. So, I'm not sure if you're at your laptop. We are mid recording a behind the glass episode and talking it'd be flapping i know about <laughs> sf90 <laughs> finance any chance you can send through a really rough example with a 50 grand deposit or how much yeah, would yeah, you 10 10 yeah, with a 50k deposit base it on a car that's like four don't worry if you don't see this until later will give you more of a heads up next time. <laughs> the fact that you can type as quick as you can talk is quite impressive because um, I can't do that. Well, let's see how good a magnitude are at the, <laughs> the last minute <laughs> last minute finance quotes. I mean, that I do that about six times a day, I have to say, so <laughs> they are usually pretty good. Oh, hi, Tim, sorry. I've just found a 35,000 mile challenge for Dali. Can you give me a finance quote? So um, when Tim says to me he's in a meeting, what he means is he's replying yeah, to you. Literally that. Yeah. Literally that. Anyway, um, so uh, let's get back to what we were talking about. <laughs> Special Ferraris and the fact that I now do definitely want a Competizione Aperta. And it, oh, I want, who don't? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, but this one I want to pick up on. Somebody had a bit of a go at me the other day saying, in all really? my videos, and I'm always talking about, oh, I just want this, oh, I want this car, oh, God, I really want one. Saying, oh, God, just pick one and calm down. But What's the as, end then? But as car guys... Tell me, we'll, we'll spend our life wanting well, more cars? Of course. And uh, that's the whole point of being a car guy, right? You endlessly want other cars. Not, well, not just cars, just in general life. You always want better than what you've got, surely, right? So I regularly listen to another podcast, uh, Dak Shepard. He's an American actor and he does something called uh, Armchair Expert and he interviews oh. big Hollywood celebrities. And he had Sean Mendes. He's a singer yeah, yeah. on it. I, I know who Sean Mendes is. <laughs> Your daughter knows who Sean Mendes is. You have no idea. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and they were talking about this. So there's this desire, this intrinsic desire in humanity, but also you know these generations to desire more, to always want more. And it's all relative. And he was saying that he was giving himself a hard time during lockdown because he was sitting there wanting a bigger house, wanting more money wanting more success blah blah blah. and he was like what why can't i just take stock and go look what i've achieved for sure it's just not the way we are as humans and i think when you're into cars i know someone who has more cars than anyone could ever want ever Mm -hmm. and enough money to go and buy all the ones left that he hasn't got yeah and he is constantly shopping in his mind yeah. or experience. Oh, I want one of those. Oh, I'd have one of those. I, and everything from a Golf R32 right up to a Black Ferrari Apertus. Yeah, yeah. This is who we are. I don't think, I might say a lot in my videos because I generally do. If I spend time in a Defender 90, I do kind of want one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is mad. I just got, I'm not saying I'm going to go and buy one. No. 
And I'll definitely tell you the ones I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know. No, I agree, mate. I, I think you're spot on. And, it's and loud, right? Of course it's allowed. How it's do you do loud. your job, though? Because surely do you not just want so many things? Or does it actually tarnish how you feel about a lot no, of No, it's the other way around, mate. It, like, it's a tarnish. Like, it's okay. like... You know, like it's a it's a kid in a candy shop. It's all right for you can eat sweets for for a couple of days and then you get bored of them. So it was a lot harder when I started um, because everything I bought, I'll keep that. I'll keep that. But you can't when you're a motor dealer, you can't do that. You've got to sell it. So um, I actually put a thing out the other day about a car that I need for a few months, and I actually had one. Then I didn't. I and I. Sold it for a profit, and yeah. I wish I had it now. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the MG GTR Pro. GTR Pro, yeah. So you put a story out saying, oh, well, has anyone got a GTR Pro? <laughs> How many people replied saying, Tony, didn't you have one about two months ago? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, had, I had one in stock, mm. and, I, and I was going to keep it for myself, um, and I decided to sell it, and I sold and now it. Now you regret it And now I'd, I do actually want one, for because it looks like the world's reopening <laughs> again. I do actually want one to put some miles on for a while, so... If anyone's got one, by the way. Yeah, there we go. Unless you can have another shot there. You have to promise not to sell it this time. No, I won't. Um, so, uh, look, a couple of bits of new car news, actually. And the reason that we're we're recording today a little bit later than we usually would, because there's been an embargo in oh, place. Oh, what day is it today? Oh, it's it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, usually yeah. we record on a Monday. Today's a Wednesday. We do, yeah. Um, so, first off, uh, we talk about last week, uh, Lotus finally gave us the sort of first few clues to the car that's going to be replacing the, uh, the Exige, the Evora, and the Elise. What, they built one car to replace three? Yes, because obviously they're going, they're all going hybrid, they're going electric. Like all of Lotus is going electric hybrid. Wait, wait, wait. So they've got that big Larry thing. The Avaya. And then all them other three are going and they're not replacing it with three cars. One. One? Yeah, because you've got to think. And an issue. Elise, Exige, and Evora were variations of the same thing. Yeah. Especially Elise and Exige. So. That's what they've done for the last, what, what what did we say? It was 15, 20 years, basically? Yeah. So they're changing their complete, you know, lineup, like so many brands are. We know Jaguar are going all electric in a couple of years. So a lot of lineups are changing. And so there's, it's a car called the Amira, and it's going to be the last naturally aspirated Lotus. Why are they going to make any money? What no, do you mean? No, 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 no. In terms of, I know they've got the electric cars coming. Yeah. No, I'm getting confused. No, I'm not getting confused. Go so on. them three cars are going. Yeah. And they're replacing it with... One electric car? No. Something called the Amira. Right, which is the last... Naturally aspirated sports car from Lotus. And then what? We don't know anything else yet. There's right, a whole okay, new fine. plan. They've got these new owners, Geely, a big conglomerate over from China. Yeah. Bought them up, same guys who own Volvo and stuff like that. So yep. that's the Avaya. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more EVs and potentially a few hybrids. Now, what we don't know about this Amira is we could see various engines. Maybe they're going to have variation of engines. We can, of course, see... A coupe, we could see a Targa top, we could see a Spider. We don't know. It's another 911 variation then. Yeah, it's going to be a rival, yeah, yeah. of course. I think yeah, it's yeah. going to be, I personally see it sitting more at the Avora level than the Elise level. So I think that's the kind of, that's where it's going to sit. And they're going to do a smaller engine variation. So like take an F-Type, you're going to have that one car, but you're going to have your engine level four cylinder and then your top level V8. I think that's how they're going to differentiate okay. it personally, rather than before you had the Elise, then you had the Exige and then you had the Avora. Okay. I think. I don't know because there's few details. They literally just tease the tiniest of details and lots more is coming in July, I think. But I actually quite like the name, Amira. Yeah. Lotus Amira. And I can already tell you what Lotus is going to do in the future. They're just going to be a sister company to Volvo, basically. So they're just going to do a bit like what Peugeot and Vauxhall do now. Well, that's no, I think you've got... I personally think you've got that wrong because I think that's Polestar. Polestar is obviously the Polestar performance... Polestar and Lotus, then? No, Polestar and Volvo. Yeah. Because Polestar is the performance sort of you know, sub-brand of Volvo. Yeah. And Geely, the conglomerate, they own lots of companies. They own a huge part of Mercedes. Yeah. This is the Volvo, the sort of obvious yeah, famous yeah. one. So Lotus, I think, are going to be Geely's sports enthusiast brand. There'll be a lot of Volvo tech in there, though. 100%. Always has been, hasn't there? Isn't the in-car infotainment Lotus. system from Volvo? What, Lotus now? Is it not? No, the, uh, no, no. of course it's not, because I used it. It's like an Alpine system, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like, like an old Renault or Toyota. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Really or Alpine, sorry, Alpine system, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're, sorry, you're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, fine. So yes, there may be some hand-me-down parts in terms of indicator stalks and things like that, but I think they're trying to keep Lotus true to being Lotus. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the way, they'll, Geely will get it horribly wrong if they turn Lotus into a parts bin, you know, sort of, it's it's got a, 
remain pure to its ethos. That's how Lotus have stayed survive, uh, have survived all these years. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I believe you're right, but I bet they use all the tech from Volvo and Polestar to power them. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm all for that. Yeah. Sounds very reliable to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited. I think a lot of people know I'm a big Lotus fan, spent a bit of time with the Lotus last year, but have over the years. Uh, and I'm just excited by this new era. Weirdly, I'm more excited by the new era for Lotus than I am for Jaguar. Whilst I'm totally open to Jaguar's revolution, and I'm on board and I'm a huge Jag fan, I weirdly am more intrinsically linked to their heritage stuff. Mm. With Lotus, I'm all about the future. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Different thing. Uh, anyway, that's not what the embargo was for. <laughs> the, right. okay. the embargo that we've been waiting to break uh, <laughs> was for the Bentley Continental GT Speed. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the big engine car? No, same engine, uh, W12. No, no. Yeah, the yeah, W12, 12. yeah. So this, I actually drove this uh, last week, a couple of weeks ago at Silverstone. Ah, oh, so you and the, Paul went. Yeah, me, Paul, Tim, Shmi went a few, there. A few of you I'm went. I'm sure a few other people went. Um, yeah. it's, it's blasted all over the internet today. Uh, now, this is a weird one because everyone knows I love the Continental GT. Mm-hmm. Me too. I want one. <laughs> there we go. It's to a lot of people that <laughs> say I want too many cars. Um, and this is theoretically the best version of the Continental Always GT. Yeah. yeah, so... It, it's dynamically better without hopefully losing any of the comfort, any of the usability, any of the elegance that a Bentley has. Where did you go? Nice Welsh road, Scotland. Silverstone. What? <laughs> Are you joking? S- yeah, no, no, no. I'm generally not joking. What? So on, on a racetrack? Yeah, on a racetrack. In a two and a half ton car? In a Bentley. So now look, Bentley put their hands up and said, look, we realise this isn't where anyone brings a Bentley. No, we're not expecting people to come to the track and it's not probably the best place to show off a Bentley, but we aren't going to be able to drive them on the road until September or something like that. So we've got Why? a little uh, regulatory, I don't know what, paperwork, red tape. So but we have the cars ready. So we wanted to come and get you in them to see, because we're excited and we want to have a go. And we've been blown away by how good they've been around track and we think you might be too. And we were, we were all sitting there being like, all right, mate, go oh, sure. My God, it was good around track. <laughs> Honestly, so really? a few things to notice. Uh, power, like it's not it's not a revolution. As with everything with Bentley, they've incrementally improved all these little areas, as I say, to make it dynamically a little bit better, but not by sort of, you know, stripping out weight and adding huge wings, like the Super Sport and things like that, which are a bit more dramatic. This is the speed. It's, it's uh, yeah, just sort of, you know, it's about chassis. Mm-hmm. So they've really honed in on no roll, basically flattening the roll of the car through a corner. So it remains super flat. Yeah. Um, the, I'm forgetting the name. They had a really good name for it. Character. It was like character traction or something like that. Like they, it read the, the, what, the, the moment the car understands what's happening and then bases its traction based on what's well, going you on. You lot drive it. I'm sure, I'm glad it does understand what's happening. Lol. <laughs> but the most impressive thing by a country mile, the brakes. Uh, that's one thing I was going to ask. Oh my God. So they've got these, Huge carbon ceramic brakes on them. Optionals. Okay, fair. Um, but that car, I remember I drove the Continental GT in New Zealand during Drive the World on a twisty road. And whilst it is impressive through the corners, yes, you cannot get away from the weight when you start when you need to brake. Mm-hmm. That's the bit where you, you really notice it because you can carry you can get so much speed in those cars, they're so quick, then you've got to lose it. You, you know, going into Correct. a corner. Um, but these ceramics, unbelievable. I bet they're Eurus. I bet they're Eurus brakes. Ah, good point. Yeah, I bet they are because them Euros brakes are good until they get really hot because it's heavy. Yeah, that's of course, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that was there was a real party piece that they were they were keen to talk about. Six pot, there'd be six pot. Yeah, too technical for me now. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I for some reason I have never got my head around brakes. Really? Yeah, I I don't know why pistons, calipers, but I, it's one part of a car that I've never got my head around. Well, you should, because that's what stops you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're talking in the presentation, I'm like, hmm, great. Uh, yeah. But boy, did I feel it. And yet, and I have to say, of all the cars I thought I would enjoy on track, it would not have been a Bentley. But I did enjoy it. It was nice. It, it was, you know, I wasn't setting any lap records. Um, you're still in a Bentley, so you're kind of just cruising along and chatting and having a very nice time. It's like it's going really fast on the M1 and then suddenly there's a corner. Oh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, be, I bet if you really, really started to push it, though, you then, then you'd go, oh, actually, maybe. Well, uh, Sid, a North, I think he goes by now. Sideways Sid. Used to be Sideways Oh, Sid. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was there as well on the day. Yeah, yeah. 
The thing goes sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh sure my it does. God. I'm sure it does. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And they really worked on that traction control, the various stages of traction. I think there's three or four various stages, uh, so, you know, to make it more progressive, to make it sort of easy to handle that huge car. Because it is still an all-wheel drive system, don't forget. Correct. Um, Probably rear bias, though. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it was, just, it was just mega impressive and super nice. And and I think, I, in my mind, the co- I've, we've referenced it so many times, that Continental GT is the ultimate GT car today. Correct. We Correct. use it as a sort of, you know, it's a benchmark. It's a benchmark, don't yeah. we? Whenever we're talking about that, that cars. And they've just stepped it forward. Yeah. It's just, it's just gone on another level. Um, in terms of price as well. <laughs> oh my God, it's a lot of money. Well, well, listen. And no, oh my God, I know what you're going to say. Please don't say this. So you can spec. I know you can spec a normal one if you went mad to quarter of a million quid. So please don't say it's, it's near 300 spec well, the thing is, I don't know spec, but let me give you the list price, and then you could probably work out spec straight away. Oh my god! Oh, maybe they haven't confirmed it. Thank God. I don't think they've confirmed the list price. Maybe we were just all okay. I'm not going to say because I don't think they've confirmed it. I think we were all just guessing on the day. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be what thirty five grand more than the standard car. I don't think the it'll speed. Be two, it'd be two seventy, two eighty. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, what? what? That's a lot, isn't it? And and do you know what? Ceramics will be an option, right? It's a car for rich people. They are an option, and they're yeah. going to be, what, a 10 grand option, yeah, don't, don't you think? Yeah, don't bother with them. No, so, do. That, you need them. Really? Yeah, because also... Well, how like, many times are you going to go around Silverstone in the Bentley? Not for the Silverstone. The Silverstone? For the road. Because as we've... Sp- it's still a heavy car, and they help shed that weight so much better than the standard brakes. It transforms how you can drive that car. But the, so and so, wait a minute. Okay, this might be your knowledge for brakes. If a, if if a disc is the same size, and the calipers are the same size, the stopping power would be no difference. The only difference is is when they get hot. They now have the should, distinction of being the biggest discs yet fitted to any production car at four hundred and forty millimeters in diameter. Yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, so I just thought I'd jump in with them. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is whether it's a steel or a carbon ceramic. The, the 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 actual initial the the power should be the same. It's only when they get hot they're different. Sure, okay, fine. So for the road you should be all right. But surely that initial grab is better in No, a, it should no? no, it shouldn't be, mate. Not not for the road. I mean flipping hell, I mean how fast do you want to go? Very fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's an often it's often a, a misunderstood thing, isn't it, carbon ceramics? Correct. People spec them on road cars thinking, oh yeah, I'll go after carbon ceramics. When actually steel brakes or you know, normal brakes. If they're the same diameter and you've got the same number of pistons in the caliper, it's not normally the brakes, it's the brake fluid that will go. And that's mm. why you get your that's why you Long get your pedal. pedal. Yeah. yeah. Because the brake fluid is too hot. Sure. So, um, but it, obviously ceramics last longer. But sometimes you still get your fade in 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 ceramic brakes because it's not it's not the the the, the pad or the discs. It's the um, the 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 fluid. The remember that high mileage GT3 I drove that yeah, had yeah. the original carbons on it, 175,000 miles oh, original. Amazing. So they can go forever, especially if it's not heavily tracked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As you say, it'll just be the other elements that will need to be life of the car. They say if if it's Looked after properly and yeah. not trashed. Like my GT3 RS. <laughs> you know what I mean? In general, yeah. like they should last. Unbelievable. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I was impressed by it, but I was never not going to be impressed by it. I mean, it, it's it's just a, it's an even better version of the Continental GT, you know, which is a car that's already mega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's a, th- there's a lot of reviews about it today because I say the embargo has now been lifted. So, <laughs> But would you have one of them or would you yes. have an 812? Oh, very different things. No. Yes, because... They're both GT cars. I still think the 812, because of Ferrari's steering, is inherently a little skittish. Of course. I think it's too hard to really relax in. What's a rear-wheel drive? I mean, <laughs> it's raining outside. <laughs> you are. You're just not going anywhere. I'll see you at the hotel, guys. <laughs> I'm going at 40 miles an hour for the rest I, of the way. To be honest... Especially as I know what Bentleys do after a year. I know Ferraris do the same, but I would probably have the Bentley because after a year, they're 130, 140 Mm. grand. The 812 will be easily 100 grand more for a used car. It's not 100 grand better. There's no way. The fact that you're driving a Ferrari and not a Bentley, 
And, and you know, the, it, it comes back to what we were talking about with the McLaren GT. If you want a comfortable Grand Tour, like if you want the true definition of a Grand Tourer, you do not want a supercar. Mm-mm, no. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's about doing both and you can have a car that sort of touches something. But the A12, it's not. As great as it is at being comfortable and usable, it is still a supercar. And I say, it is still skittish as hell. The steering is super, super light, super, super dynamic. Oh, sorry, super direct. It's a lot of power to the rear wheels. I would say it's a super GT. That's, Just, yeah. that, that's what I would say, yeah. Well, the Bentley, you can do, you can do great speeds and get you know a to b very quickly but you're uber comfortable all the time have you driven the dbs uh yeah oh sorry i was about to say i haven't but i have i've driven the dbs out in california and i didn't like it mm. i didn't like I'd, it. i mean i'd have the bentley hands down over them too because that you would think that that's the real direct competitor to the yeah dbs the bentley. versus bentley what else is up there roma is no it's a level below i would say that's a level below it even in terms of quality mate i mean you get in a bentley I mean, it's different again, different setup because in Bentley everything's refined and knurled yeah. and blah blah. Whilst the Rome is obviously very electric, you know, yeah. or electronic with all yeah. these new digital screens and things. I just I say it's still the benchmark for me mm. in terms of you want a true comfortable wafting GT car. Of course, if you're tracing lap times, if you want to be you know super dynamic on the road, yes, an A12 Superfast is going to get you around the mountain road a lot quicker. It's just a different car in my mind. Yeah, yeah. I'd have both. <laughs> so, <I would. laughs> so yeah if you could afford both and you wanted to go on an Alps trip you'd drive the Bentley to the Alps and yes. meet your 812 to go round the Alps in you're so right that's what you would do what did James do that one year because James when we went down to Monaco did he drive the GT3 and get his dad to drive the F12 down I think he did and he made sense I mean very different cars but it mm. made sense to have both there yeah, different yeah. occasions yeah. different things yeah so, you know, I, I get the appeal. If you've got the money, just buy everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's the true answer. You'd think GT4 Lusso would be the Bentley. Oh, model. GTC4 Lusso. They're not making it anymore. I know, but, but gone. at the moment, like, you know, if you compared the, they're similar, oh, they're not a bit, they're a bit dearer. Well, no, they're not, are they? The 4C. V, the V12s are what, 150, 140, 150? GT4 Lusso? Mm-hmm. Uh, more like 160, 170. For the V12? For the V12, yeah. Okay, V8s fine. are 140, 150. Fine, okay. Really? You sure? I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I don't know why. I mean, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to Wallace. have questioned you on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. On a used market basis, that would be a more direct rival. Yeah. And at which point then I'm not so sure. No, I'd still have the Bentley. Hmm. Yeah, I would have the Bentley. I think I would too, but. Mm. A V12 Lusso would be quite nice. Because you, you would literally have that just for the engine. For everything else, the Bentley's just better. So take the engine out. Yeah. Every, you can't do that. You could probably fit people more comfortably in the back of a Lusso. Those rear seats in a Bentley are, are not a thing. Yeah, the Lusso, the seats go, you sort of They're sit really good seat. Right I mean, you could back in them. fit four adults in a Lusso very comfortably. Yeah, Same with an FF. I don't think the boot's quite as big, though. I think the Bentley boot's probably bigger. Bentley boot's probably better. And so, yeah, it's definitely going to comfortably waft a bit more. The Ferrari is still... saying so You've got to know that Ferrari steering to mm. understand what we mean. But, yeah, you, know, you can't... Like, that... We just waft. It's the ultimate word. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can get a wraith, couldn't you? But <laughs> I really like them. Do you? I really... <laughs> no, you do I not. I do, don't you? You are such a wraith customer. What? Like, it's, it's painted all over your face. <laughs> My Wraith. A Wraith's a, a good shout, but again, it's a load of money. I'd still probably have the Bentley. But Wraith's... The problem I have with Rolls Royces is they're, you know, the epitome of everything, you know, the ultimate glove. I think the interiors are crap. Yeah, it's it, it's too dated. It's, it's like, really dated. Even the new cars, getting a Phantom A, all the buttons look like I've had a BMW for 10 years ago. Correct. It's and an that's not BMW, right. No. Old BMW parts, they feel plasticky. You see... Not to mention Bentley again. Uh, but everything's knurled and custom and it feels good in your hands. Some cold metallic elements and Ferrari's the same, you know, different kind of quality, but Italian stitching. Get a Rolls Royce, it's always like, oh, oh, is that really? Yeah, is I that? agree. So that's why that's why the Wraith would always... I mean, they need a bit of a shake-up, Rolls Royce, if I'm honest. I think I think they lost their way a little bit. Well, but the problem is, you say, I, I sort of agree in terms of some elements, but nothing beats the actual driving and ownership experience. I haven't owned one, but... When you're in a Rolls Royce, you are definitely in a Rolls Royce. Yeah, you're in the back of it, though, surely. Well, no, because a Wraith, you're in the front, right? Yeah, apart from and a probably Wraith. a Ghost, you're in the front. Yeah. It's 50-50, I think, in a Ghost. Yeah, but, maybe. Uh, 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 and 
driving it, it is, you're driving a barge. It is super soft, super comfortable. You drive at 20 miles an hour very happily. Like all of those elements, the, the how quiet it is, yeah. unreal. It's just that the actual interior elements are all just a bit, Yeah, some of them don't work. And I'm like, come on guys, it's Rolls Royce. You can't let that side slip. Yeah, you're the, you're the luxury pinnacle of cars. The total pinnacle. And they yeah. concentrate on sound dampening tires. And I'm like, Get some better buttons in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care about the tires. Well, look, I've been trying to eat this out, waiting for Tim to get back to me, but clearly he has better things to do than <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. make up SF90 quotes. He's going to send me an email at 10 p.m. tonight, be like, oh, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. I actually feel a bit bad now. I'm going to send him a text saying, don't worry, don't worry. about that. Don't worry about that SF90 quote. <laughs> However, please do, because I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to really spook him out. <laughs> Can you get me approved on an SF90 <laughs> final? <laughs> That'll give him a nosebleed. Oh, sorry, Tim. Anyway, if you are interested in getting a quote from Magnitude, they have their amazing finance calculator, which you can jump on. I'm, they probably Should we just try that? Should we just try the finance calculator? Just while we're well, sitting. I mean, you can. I don't think it would do a... It won't, will it? It won't do an SF90. It'll give you a 50% balloon. Because so. the, the really specialist stuff, they like you to get in touch. Yeah, you It's got a good a, guidance, the calculator. But, should get a manual balloon. Um, vehicle. We're going used or new? New. Yeah, no. New. Um, it won't do it surely can you imagine if it did hold on a sec uh, oh no they don't they like you to call them about new fries they like you to call them okay well, is that what they said yeah 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 makes sense yeah anyway <laughs> we'll draw an end to today's episode I say bumper filled but as always a bit shorter than some of our other unbumper filled episodes <laughs> um, we have lots of exciting things coming up over the next few weeks have we we have put out a call for an EV expert to come and join us oh, for an episode that. and it's happening He's coming. It's happening. So we're going to be able to go in and grill somebody on all the things that apparently we keep getting wrong. Well, it, it'll be nice to actually have someone sit here and either confirm our faults or go in on us. <laughs> yeah, probably just go in on us. <laughs> but hopefully it will mean that at least, the, you know, we can put things, certain elements to bed. Um, we've also got a couple of other guests lined up. Someone very interesting that I think we're going to enjoy chatting to, or I'm going to enjoy chatting to, who I would call... A modern classics expert. Watch out, What, Tony. coming in here? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, that's going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope he's prepared. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we've got some other great bits and bobs coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. If you're watching here on YouTube, hit subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss future episodes. If you want to follow Tony anywhere, he's at Tony Gravel with Car Sales. I'm at Seen Through Glass. And we'll be back with you with another episode, including another After the Checkered Flag episode next week. Bye-bye. See ya. Tim's just emailed. Tim's just emailed. Hold oh, oh, on. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Hold on a sec. Where? What a legend. He's what an absolute back? legend. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Why is it? Oh, here we go. Here Are we go. Are you going to cut this in or right. we're going to just put yeah, it in? Yeah, yeah, we'll put it in. It's coming at the end. <laughs> so if the car costs 470K, yeah. 50K deposit, yeah. 48 month thing, yeah. it's 4,775 per month. His uh, balloon is 275,000. Uh, so it's 50% balloon, isn't it? Uh, no, it's a bit more than that. Sixty percent, isn't it? I'm not good at maths. Yeah, it's about sixty percent. So, yeah, so I was right. You were uh, right. As in, as in, if you get seventy five percent, it'd be about four grand a month. I'm paying. You are a legend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you, Tim. for a five hundred odd grand, well, four hundred seventy grand car, five grand a month. That's no, four seven. Four seven. You want to do half half? What? You put the deposit in, and I'll give you a grand a month. That's fair. Well, I mean, that's not half-half, is it? <laughs> anyway, that's how amazing magnitude are. Incredible.